Kia ora koutou. In this video, I'm going to try and get through four merit questions from last year's complex numbers paper. So the first one is one about the factor and the remainder theorem. We're given a polynomial, this is it here, and we're told that it's got the same remainder when we divide by x minus 2 as when we divide by x plus 1. And that's not going to be enough to find the value of um, both a and b, but we're then also told that the polynomial has x plus 2 as a factor. So you can see where this is going to go. We're going to end up with a couple of simultaneous equations. So what do we know about the remainder? Well, we've got f of negative 2, oh, sorry, f of 2, when I divide by x minus 2, is going to give me the same as f of negative 1. So let's work out what both of those are. So f of 2 is going to be 2 cubed, 8, plus 3 times 4, plus 2a, plus b, which is 20, plus 2a, plus b. And f of negative 1 will be negative 1 cubed, so negative 1, plus 3 times negative 1 squared, which is 1, minus a, plus b. So cleaning that up gives me 2 minus a plus b. So we can put those together already and get some kind of condition. So 20 plus 2a plus b is equal to 2 minus a plus b. So that's good because that means that we can solve for a straight away, which is slightly easier than it could have been. So we've got 18 is equal to negative 3a, giving me a is equal to negative 6. All right, so that's the first bit done. And now we're going to use the condition that x plus 2 is a factor. And that means that f of negative 2 has to equal 0. So f of negative 2 is equal to negative 8 plus 3 times 4 minus 2a plus b. But we know what a is now, right? So we've got negative 8 plus 12 plus 12 again plus b. And that equals 0. So 24 minus 8 is 16, plus b is equal to 0, b is equal to negative 16. So that's that question done. In the next question, we have to um, take a complex number, do some stuff with it, and then show that its argument is pi on 4. And remember, the arg of a complex number is the angle that it makes with the positive direction of the axis. So if z is up here in the first quadrant, the arg is going to be this angle in here. I think it's easiest to do this one by doing the work before we apply the arg. So we're first going to work out what z minus 1 and then what z minus 2i. So z minus 1 is equal to 1 plus 3i take away 1, which is just 3i. That's nice. And then z minus 2i is 1 plus 3i minus 2i, which is 1 plus i. So z minus 1 over z minus 2i is 3i over 1 plus i. And we can multiply by the conjugate over the conjugate. In the denominator, we're going to get 1 plus 1. And in the numerator, we're going to get 3i minus 3i squared. So you can see where this is going. That gives me 3 plus 3i divided by 2. Now if we just whack in a diagram here, we can see visually that if we've got 3 over 2 here, and we've got 3 over 2 up here, then this point here is going to be what we've got, and its argument is pi on 4. Right. So it's, I think it's actually fine to go from there to just write straight away theta equals pi on 4. It looks to me like the mark schedule did as well. I'd really like to see a diagram just showing me that you get that. Well, the other slower way to do it is to say that tan inverse of whatever it was, z, what was it? z minus 1 over z plus 2i is equal to 3 over 2 over 3 over 2, which is 1. So theta is equal to pi on 4. Um, I don't know, personally I reckon that it's it's so glaringly obvious in here, when you get to here, that the angle is going to be pi on 4, that it's fine just to go straight to there. But if you're going to do that, 
I don't know, I probably would do the diagram to show that you get it. Okay, next question. Prove that this thing here is purely imaginary and A and B are real constants. So this question is one where we just have to um, work to get rid of the fraction by multiplying by the conjugate over the conjugate. So A plus BI over B minus AI is equal to A plus BI over B minus AI times B plus AI over B plus AI. Working first with the denominator, we get B squared minus ABI plus ABI minus I squared A squared. And in the numerator, we get AB plus B squared I plus A squared I minus AB. Well, let's do that really slowly, actually. Let's put plus AB I squared. And let's get rid of the last question working from over here. So you can see we're just about there, right? And here we've got um, AB minus AB plus A squared plus B squared I divided by B squared plus A squared. So this actually is much more than just being um, purely imaginary. It simplifies down to give me just i, because we've got a squared plus b squared i over a squared plus b squared, which is i, and the real part of i is equal to zero, so it's purely imaginary. Okay, so that's that one done. And then the last question in here is a de Moivre's theorem one, which I think is at the trickier end of merit de Moivre's theorem questions. Um, there's just a few things you've got to do. You've got to solve this equation, and you're given this in rectangular form, but we're going to solve it in polar form. And I haven't converted everything back to rectangular, and if I were going to do that, I'd end up using my calculator for that. Now, I haven't done that, partly because I looked at the assessment schedule and you didn't need to. You just have to solve the equation, so that will be enough. So to set it up, um, what we've got here is we've got z cubed is equal to k to the power of 6 times 1 plus i. And we know we're going to get three solutions here. We know that because we've got a cubic equation and the cubic has got, I'll just get rid of that bad pen. Um, we'll get rid of, yeah. So we're going to let z equal r cis theta, right? So r cis theta cubed equals this. But we want to turn this into polar form. And we know that if we've got 1 plus i, then this is equal to root 2, right? So the modulus of that will be root 2. So we're going to have root 2, k to the power of 6, times cis of pi on 4, because what, that's what the angle of this is, plus 2n pi. And if you're finding that hard, there's a bunch of earlier videos going through how to use De Moivre's theorem to find roots of equations. Um, so now we've got r cubed cis 3 theta is equal to root 2 k to the power of 6 times cis of this. So r cubed is equal to 2 to the power of a ha uh, half k to the power of 6. That gives me r is equal to 2 to the power of 1 sixth times k squared. So that's that first bit done. And now the theta, 3 theta, is equal to pi on 4 plus 2n pi. So theta will equal pi on 12 plus 2n pi on 3. Now I know that I'm going to be needing to substitute values in here, so I'm going to write that 2n pi on 3 as 8n pi on 12, and that makes it a wee bit faster. What do I do now? Well, I've got to get three solutions, so I'm going to plug in three values for n. So z1 is going to be 2 to the power of 1 sixth k squared cis of pi on 12. All right, remember that these will be evenly spaced around the unit circle. So at 
angles like this roughly. Then for Z2, I'm going to have N equals 1. And so I get Z2 is equal to 2 to the 1 sixth, K squared, cis, and it's going to be pi on 12 plus 8 more. So cis of 9 pi on 12. 9 twelfths is 3 quarters, so it's going to be 3 pi on 4. Then the last one, I, I want to use a principal value, so I I'm, would prefer not to keep going and substitute 2. I'm instead going to substitute n equals negative 1, because that's going to generate a value that's between negative pi and pi. So remember, when we do complex numbers, we like to have our um, args come out between 0 round to pi and then 0 back round to negative pi. So if I put in n equals negative 1, we get the third root, which is this, negative 7 pi on 12. So there you go. Um, things that I think are a bit different in there is that often when you see these questions, they will be in the form of z to the power of 5 is equal to, I don't know, negative or maybe 7i, right? This, this one is just a little bit more than that. Um, thanks for watching. If you need more practice on those, the old Delta book is the best place for them, not the A-level textbook.